Roger Dodger worked out in our last video that doing business in a company sucks because he's got to pay top up tax to get the profits out of the company because of Div 7A. This video is all about his next brilliant plan to use a trust structure for his business instead of a company. Division 7A usually applies to extraction of company profits, not trust profits. So if the business is in a trust, then Roger thinks that Div 7A should not apply. But of course, he still wants to keep the business tax rate as low as possible and ideally, you know, not higher than the corporate tax rate of 30%. And he's pretty sure he can still do that. But before we get into his brilliant plan, a bit of background about trusts. Every year, trusts usually distribute their profits to a beneficiary. When this is done, it is the beneficiary who will be taxed on those profits, not the trust. If a trust does not distribute its profits by the end of the year, then the trust itself will be taxed at a flat rate of 45%, which is pretty high. Whereas the beneficiary, like a person, would be on a marginal tax rate, which usually ends up getting a lower effective tax rate. So it generally makes more sense to distribute the profits to a beneficiary. It's very important to know that distribute profits doesn't necessarily mean that cash is distributed or paid at the same time. All that is needed to ensure that the beneficiary is taxed instead of the trust is a distribution of profits. It's kind of like as long as the trust promises to pay the beneficiary its profits, then the beneficiary will be taxed on those profits. Whether the cash is paid out or not is another story. But usually, trusts would generally pay out enough so that the beneficiaries can pay their tax bill. But leaving some distribution of profits unpaid is quite common and happens all the time. We tax nerds call it an unpaid present entitlement. That is, the beneficiary has an entitlement to the trust profits, which remains unpaid. Another thing you should know is that discretionary trusts, which is a very common type of trust used by privately owned groups, can usually distribute their profits to whomever they like. It's up to the trustee, which is the responsible person looking after the trust, to decide who should get the profits each year. It doesn't need to go to the same person each year. Distributions can also be made to other entities such as companies and other trusts. So, back to Roger's grand plan. He sets up a new trust called Dodger Trust. Instead of distributing the profits to himself, which would be subject to his 47% tax, he will get Dodger Trust to distribute the profits to Dodger Co. And the company as the beneficiary will be taxed on the income at 30% corporate tax rate. But the trust won't actually distribute all the cash to the company. So, there will be an unpaid present entitlement owing to the company and the trust will just transfer the cash to Roger. So here are the numbers. So say Dodge Trust makes $1 million in profit, and this is distributed to the company. The company gets taxed at 30%, so it needs cash to pay this tax. So the trust will pay out only 300000 of the $1 million so that the company can cover its taxes. The remaining 700000 remains owing to the company as an unpaid present entitlement. Then this cash is transferred to Roger. Roger thinks Div 70 doesn't apply because there's no payment or a loan made from a company. The amount is coming from the trust. Bad news for Roger. Unfortunately, this is still caught under Div 7A. Not the plain vanilla Div 7A, but the pimped up version of Div 7A. Pimped up Div 7A will apply when there's an unpaid present entitlement owed by a trust to a company beneficiary, and there's a payment or a loan made by the trust to the shareholder of the company or its associate. Pimped up Div 7A will deem that a dividend has been made from the company to the shareholder, which as we all know is an unfranked dividend, which is bad. The reason why it applies is because it is ultimately the company that is funding the amounts paid out to the shareholder because the trust distribution was not paid to the company. So Roger goes, hmm, what if I interposed another trust between Dodger Trust and Dodger Co? So say Dodger Trust number two has the UPE to the company, but it's Dodger Trust number one that makes the payment to Roger. It's two different trusts. Surely that will work? Nope. Sorry, Roger. Doesn't work. Used to work up until around 2009, but it then got shut down. Guess you're just too late. Okay, okay, says Roger. I give up on trying to get the funds out of the trust. So he decides to do the savvy thing and get the trust to buy an investment property. 
it's guaranteed to go up in value, and because it's in a trust, the 50% CGT discount will apply when the property is sold. This basically means that the tax on the capital gain is halved. In contrast, if the cash is distributed to the company and the company buys the property, the 50% CGT discount will not be available because companies don't qualify for the discount. Bad news for Roger again. This strategy was widely used and many trusts never paid out their profits that were owed to company beneficiaries. But all of that changed in 2010. The ATO's view since then is that all UPEs owing to companies will become deemed dividends if left unpaid for too long. We're talking like around two years. The ATO's view is that because the company is not asking the trust for its entitlement to the trust profits, the company has essentially made a loan to the trust. And as we've covered in our previous video, when a company makes a loan to a trust and the trust is an associate entity of the shareholder, that's caught under plain vanilla Div 7A. Many rich folks were using trusts as a structure for their business and distributing the profits to a company to get the 30% tax rate, but keeping the cash in the trust to invest in growth assets, like property, you know, and keeping the benefit of the 50% CGT discount. Unfortunately, you can't get the best of both worlds, and rules were introduced back in 2010 to ensure that UPEs owing to companies were either paid out completely or managed appropriately. So, going back to our original question, why is Div 7A so bloody complicated? The answer is because shareholders and their tax advisors have come up with so many brilliant schemes over the years to try to circumvent it. So whenever a new scheme pops up or is being too widely used, new legislation is introduced to shut it down. And this was done by attaching a new section or subsection or a new subdivision within Division 7A. So Div 7A is so bloody complicated because it kind of has to be. That is, in order to effectively prevent shareholders from escaping top-up tax. But... It's been way too many years of simply adding new bits of legislation written years and years ago, and it's way overdue for a rewrite, which is meant to be coming soon, whatever that means. Anyway, I hope this video has given you a taste of what Div 7A is all about. My next video is still about Roger. He's heard that there are ways not to avoid Div 7A, but to manage it. Ways to buy time, which includes entering into fancy things like complying loan agreements and subtrust arrangements. I'll tell you all about it in my next video. I hope you've enjoyed this tax nugget on Division 7A and trusts. Thanks so much for watching.